Hey everyone, it's Joe and Irfan from The Automator, and today we got a really awesome notification script, so stick around to the end. You're going to, we're going to walk through all the examples, and there's a lot of examples, but it's a very functional script that allows you to have a nice, pretty-looking tooltip kind of thing, but very functional because we've got a lot of extra functionality added to it, so stick around to the end here. Um, Irfan, why don't you go ahead and start with the, the simplest example. Now, here's the thing. This is in a very advanced class, but you don't need to know classes in order to use it, right? We're just using very basic stuff. Uh, so here we are using our notify class to like, we can use this class as a notify us, anything else we can use them in our software or any of our programs to notify, notify us about anything. So this is a well, first example, a very simple example. Yeah, but before you do that, we have to remind everyone, make sure you include, so you save this library somewhere yeah. and and include that class. Otherwise, nothing, nothing, at least with using it this way, nothing will work. Yes. So if I run this, I can have a text saying this is a text. And we can also use this method like I'm using, I'm passing an object that's one way, but if we are using a, simple method we can also just pass a text that will be treated as a body text so this is another way to do a simple notification and now we will use a duration like we are changing the duration the first duration will disappear after three seconds this will take a while, like it will stay for five seconds and then it will disappear. So, so we have a default of three seconds, right? Mm -hmm. But if you want to change that, you would put the gen duration key here and then the value of five. Okay. And everything other than that, exa that the second example he showed, everything are key value pairs inside of your, your the call you're doing. Um, that one-off where we just showed that you can have just the text, that's only if you just want some text, but that's not the normal way that we use this. Um, our example three is about, it will stay for three seconds, but now we are having some headers, some background colors, and some sounds, uh, body text, font, size increase. So yeah our body text got size have increased and notification stays for three seconds and now we have a header telling us and the default color is green and we can also change the header color and next examples and here we are changing the color uh background color like we can make it white. And now we are having white color background without any header or anything else. And this is a, like uh, using almost every parameter about the text we are using here and colors. So we can also use like colors color name like black, white, blue, green, yellow, or we can choose uh, to hexadecimal value of our color. And here we are changing the font uh, of the body, body text, body font, body font color, a body font size, and body text is here. And we are choosing header text, header text size, header font color, and header font name. And the duration for with this notification will be eight seconds. Yeah, so if you notice, everything that we're working on with the header begins with HD, and then everything for the body text for the body is BD. And then anything else is GEN, which just means general, because we have other parameters there that we'll show in a second. But yeah, you get the idea. So these are the general parameters, and that's why we didn't it and then GEN. And now we will show you second example. They are about sound. So we can also choose sound with our notification. So this will create a tada sound 
and uh, and when I click run, so playing sound, ta-da. And also we can change few more add few more parameters like header text, background color, and we can also throw a part of a sound file that should be played as a gen sound. So gen sound can be a name of like we will show you how to like how many how big that list is in the end and uh, we can also use the path file path. So when I run this, these are header and uh, play a little sound of about shutdown wave of Windows 10 and our next examples like uh, other hotkey has play sound and in play sound and play sound we use these numbers on this notification using that function and that's why we are demonstrating here like Starrick 16 will play that top hand sound and when I do this and this is play hand sound so I, I can ch change the text Stop hand sound hand. Stop public error. So this is uh, another way to choose. Uh, we can choose from this number. They are mentioned in our documentation. You can go to that link. And in our fourth example, we are playing a MIDI file. And uh, we are passing a path to the file, and it's a long MIDI file, so we are increasing the gen duration. Because it's a, a big MIDI file, it takes time to load. So when I click this, it will take some time to load, and then it will place that MIDI for you. Mm -hmm. Right, just like that. <laughs> And I should stop that and and we can also uh, choose to stop playing like using our callback function which will explain in our fifth examples uh, and we are using a callback function to stop playing so this try statement will stop playing the sound file so when I click this and I have uh, it will take time to load and uh, yeah click stop playing click to stop playing and when I, when I click as soon as I click the notification go away and the sound stop playing because of this notification otherwise it will not stop it will keep play until that midi finish or until you <laughs> use that play sound or do another notification that will play sound for you then it will stop playing so that, that's how play sound functionality works for an auto hotkey and uh, in our sixth example now we will show you how to list all the sounds so in this we if you run it will scan through all the windows sound path and uh, as well as the resource folder if that's resource folder within the example folder within the escape dirs folder then they will also be included there so we can choose any alarm one two three chimps chore ding notify recycle any sound from this list we can choose to play the like you we are using tada when you run that in this example, that gets copied to your clipboard. So if you want to paste that somewhere and go and grab that text, you can. Yeah, it is copied in our track. And we can paste all of the lists anywhere we want. And this is our second, uh, seventh example. So as our play sound works, so I'm doing two notification 
one after another. So first notification will cancel the Tera sound and the second notification will play ding sound. So we will not hear the Tera sound. We will have the ding sound and you will uh, look at another uh, ability of notify it stick notification one another other so, so these are staking of the notification and we are hearing the ding sound and tada sounds getting canceled yeah, so the the GUI stack but the sounds overlap so it it just the first one gets nullified by the second one because they happen so fast yes but the images GUIs, you'll see those add up and will stay there for a while, and it's pretty cool. Yes. And our fourth fourth example, we are like we can use images, icons, icon parts, and some DLL icons. So the critical is user DLL icon, and we are using that. If you use if you choose critical, it will show us this icon. So just an icon, nothing else, and we can add text to it. And we now we are changing a question icon <clears throat> notify with question icon. And here we are having text and our icon, and we can also have sound with it. So we can play exclamation sound with. No, we are having header, body text, and then I can, I'm sorry, not the sound. In the next, we will we will define defining the sound. So here we are. We will have the body text, header text, and the icon. So green, notify icon, explanation icon, and the green header. That is default color for it. We can change the color to. We have mentioned that. Example one. Uh, now in example four, notify with icon and sound. So icon is information and but sound is we are using exclamation sound, sorry. And we can also have uh, ability to change the size of icon. So we are choosing uh, 70 size, which is 70 pixel. And the uh, ratio is same, so height and width will be same for the security icon. Uh, other example is about we can uh, choose an uh, image part that is JPG and it's a Windows 10 wallpaper in a Windows folder. So this is how we can show up the image and notification and uh, we can also increase the size by 100 by 100 pixels add some text and the header so the image now is change the automator modify text and we can also choose a icon file path, not just JPG, you can choose any other image that supports the auto hotkey GUI. So this is icon, this very little icon, you can increase the size of that icon with gen icon size. And now the simple one is shell DLL. We can choose a number, an uh, integer, and it will show up icon from a shell DLL. And uh, if I run this, we are having the second icon. And let me just increase the size of it for you. So, so now we can uh, show an icon in this example, and uh, gen icon and the icon number will be read from the shell DLL and if I run this this is our icon and we can choose from the icon like 50 uh, like 17 we have another icon and that's how and we can add text and header to that as well and in here in this example uh, we are getting 
icon from an executable file, which is an executable in System32. So. Yeah, and that example just picks the first icon, right? And we talked about adding where we could add parameters, but we decided to this thing already has enough bells and whistles. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And in the end, uh, this is our icon picker, and uh, like add it to this class. So if we run this, we can have uh, is this GUI. It has all the shell DL icons and the number. So by visually, we can <clears throat> choose a number. Like if I can, if I want to choose this icon, like I can twenty. So I, I yeah. take it and I can paste it here. What we noticed was, you know, the especially between Windows 10 and 11, the Shell 32 DLL file changed what icons are for what number. So be careful if you're sharing this with someone else, they're using a different OS version that may not be the same number. Um, but we decided instead of linking to constant, um, a web page that would list them because it's different on depending on your OS, we built a tool that will look inside your computer and say on the shell 32 DLL what those icons are. So at least you know for your OS, it's going to do this. That is what you'll get. So this is our icon picker and the little help function to list all icons, parameters. And uh, if, you run, if you run this method, so it will give you, we can use integer as a defined path and these words. And we can also change the size of the icon using a number, and that number will be heightened with the same. In our fourth example, um, we can use hyperlink as well. And uh, in this notify, we are choosing a link. And uh, in auto hot key hyperlink, like we can create some hyperlinks. We can, we can go to the link and it is about uh, this tag and using that and href parameter we can define a hyperlink. So this is our hyperlink. If I click this, it will open the website. What's cool about that is you can you know you can have multiple hyperlinks as well. So if you're doing something and you want to help support people or give them an option to go to a place Makes it very, very handy, I think. It doesn't just run the URL, which is what most people would do with AutoHotKey, right? It, it makes it available that you can decide to click or not. So we change a little bit syntax, and now this is another way to use like uh, our class to, yeah, like we are here using a hyperlink example. And here, if I click and I can go, to the documentation and it says how to define a hyperlink. So it's it's a great class based on other hot degree. And in the end, as Mr. Joe says, we can have multiple hyperlinks and user can click on them. So These are the web pages that are linked to the linked to our notifications and they are working fine. And in our fifth examples, we are creating some callbacks, very cool callbacks. So in here, uh, what is a callback? So the simple definition and they are what is called back end. And this is a notify example following like just like that. Please call me back when I click. And uh, the message box will appear ring ring as you click I'm calling me back. Uh, uh, if, I, if I click this, I will have this call back ringing as you click and call it back. So this is our callback from for from the notify we can use it in any method just like running a URL like running a file a program so for example we are running 
run command. We are running a URL, so we can, it can be a folder, it can be a path, it can be executable. In this example, if so you need to visit. So build notify is telling me you need to visit the web page. As soon as I click it, I navigate to that page. So here's our hero club. And uh, in third example, like some program doing some process, I like counting file in, in some folder and when uh, it notify will share how many file counts we have and then if you click it will open that folder for us so file count of seven in example folder and then i click it will give me that folder open so there's a simple example we can use in many ways our callbacks and uh, in another example we are we are downloading a file from a web page, it's an image file, and uh, you will see when I click, it will open the file for me. So uh, after downloading, I'm in the file. So waiting while we download the image. So we are waiting, file complete, and if I click this, it will open the image. In example six, uh, we will use this uh, our library our notify library we can use this library without including and we can just use run command in this example we are using run command passing these parameters with adding of the dash and uh, it will work for us like it will work for any program if you are using some other program just compile it to an executable and that executable will be your notify library you just run the command line parameters from your program and it will display that message it's uh, advanced and stuff and uh, so in there i'm using a run command like it, this is the part of the notify library and this is the text will be the parameters we're passing to it yeah yeah we are parameters body text we are passing them like in our previous example. If I run this, I'll have CMD, CMD simple example. So it's running fine. And uh, we can also choose uh, executable. So I compiled my script. So if I run the same parameters with my compiled executable, I will get the same message. I can choose path i can choose script like i'm i am uh, saving my path to my executable or my path to my script into a, a variable and now i will use that part in my other example just like this yeah. and and parameters pass the parameter bd tags and now i'm using a sound playing general sound choosing a general sound between plate so we can add any parameter we want ex except the callback. <laughs> mm. And uh, this is another way, like we are using a parameter variable. We are also now saving our parameters in a variable, but we are using a join command. So these are new lines, but replaced with the uh, space. So this parameter or variable will work very easily. So we are using a duration zero. So we have to click to notify to disappear. So we have to like we have we are having header tags, we are having body tags, and now we are duration we duration have zero. If I click it will disappear. And this example, also using a join command, but we include we increase the parameters. So there are like six to seven kind of parameters about fonts, colors, body tags, like icon size, background color, duration, header text color, header text font. So we can change all of them. 
So these are notify class using an icon, background is white, text, and header. And it, it will stay for 10 seconds. So it took a time to disappear. And uh, in the last example, we are creating a hyperlink and uh, we are using link instead of body text. So I can run this and uh, link and there's the link. If I click that link, I will link documentation there yeah, so this is how we can like any program can run our notify class and make any kind of notification using command line pro parameters <laughs> and uh, the seventh last one is uh, example about the default so here we will run few notify we will create few notifications but here we are using show but the default property has all the defaults within so we can change multiple defaults like this notification notification will be different from this so after changing the default every next notification have that change in them until we decide to change them within the within as a parameter if you use a change parameter to change it it will change and uh, then we are using a single default parameter like we can add it a single parameter a default parameter or we can add change them all it they will work so if i run this you can see this taking out four messages before the changing default, after the changing default, it's keep the setting like we change the icon, but it's it's keeping out of sleep after line eight of, of like one second, just so people get the flow because it's it's way too fast in, in how they happen. And then add one after the line 24, another second, and then after on 27 also there we go that'll help pace them out a little um because it's a little confusing how they they happen and they stack right it makes you feel like the did that really last a second that between the first two no you got a hundred yeah. you got a tenth of a second the first first uh first notify has the default duration which is three seconds yeah but you're put in one tenth of a second as a sleep not a second oh ten ten second you're, what are you talking about? That's a thousand was, second. Oh, <laughs> you that know that. Be, yeah. yeah, that will be one second delay. Yeah, that's what I asked. Yeah, that's what I wanted to do. Okay. After one second, after one second, and then after one second. So. And what's cool is you noticed also the first one disappeared before the others were done. Um, it's dynamic, right? It's not a one-time thing. So it, when it's called, it keeps track of that time. It's very cool. Yeah. Cool. And uh, that's it. Did did we look at the color and sound? The, I don't remember doing the color list. Yeah. Color list. In, did we color actually... list? Yeah, we haven't did the color list. So yeah. these are the color lists. Uh, oh, I have to disable uh, them all. Yeah. So these are our call lists. They are in our clipboard now. So these are the colors we can use and the notification as well as with automatic degrees. Right. Or we can use a yeah. number hex value of the color. And there is a sound list so like the yellow and text is a little bit because we are not changing the defaults <laughs> that's why so right after changing the defaults everything change according to them so this is our icon list mm, yeah icon list tells us about the this this list and uh, we can choose the parts and the other numbers and size and there is our 
icon picker that tells us, help us to choose icon, yep. what icon we want to choose. All right, so that basically covers a lot of different examples, but of course, since it's dynamic, you can you know think up 8 billion combinations of things. Um, I'll put the URL up here where you can grab this, and thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that, and hope to see you soon. Cheers. Bye.